Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. Q3, course schedule four. Uh, so this one was also kind of straightforward. Uh, the prerequisite and the course schedule name might lead you to think, and that's what I was thinking in, initially, uh, to do some kind of topological sort, because, well, that's what a lot of these problems are, right? But, it, uh, but the first thing that I did was that uh, you're given a lot of queries, so I just want to make sure that n is good enough, and n is less than 100, and once I kind of was like, this isn't a topological sort, this is just query thing, right? And I was thinking, well, that's just all pairs uh, like every pair can you for every vertex can you get to another vertex given a prerequisite right and it always tells you that the prerequisite graph has no cycle no repeated graph so what I end up doing what I end up uh, implementing is this algorithm called Warshaw's algorithm uh, and basically I create an adjacency matrix and and here right now I'm actually looking at the inputs because I wasn't sure which direction it's going um, where, and what I mean by that is whether A goes to B or B goes to A as the prerequisite. Actually, probably didn't really matter, but that's what I was spending my time on here. I was looking at examples just to make sure, but I was like, why? why? Actions. It really could have just given one example and it would have made my life happy. But, uh, but some, excuse me, some days you're just a little off and I guess that's what happened here. <coughs> uh, but basically, the pre prerequisites list, just uh, the edge list, just allows me to populate the adjacency matrix. And then now I just use Warshaw's algorithm. Uh, it's kind of like Floyd Warshaw's algorithm, but it's just Warshaw because this is uh, a this is what is called a transitive kosher, and and as you can imagine, it because in this graph it it uses something called a transitive property, and that means that if a a implies b and, and b implies c, then a implies c, right? And Warshaw's algorithm is what you use to find the transitive closure of uh, of this graph. And then I was like, okay, do I have to do anything funky? No, I guess I just have to put it in an answer, right? Because it's just boolean anyway. Uh, and then I spent some time, which is maybe a little bit sad as well, just uh, <laughs> just double checking the answers, like one by one. And I really wish that they, uh, you know, have a checker for you for example cases. But I did one test, I, I submitted, and it was good, so I was very happy. Cool. Q3, course schedule four. There are a total number of N courses. Oh yeah, so this one, um, I spent some time, so I spent about three minutes, or less than three minutes on this problem. So I spent some time on this problem, uh, just trying to figure out what, what the prerequisite pairs are, because it actually doesn't, and I, I guess here it tells you here, but I was trying to look for it in the statement, which one is which. Like, given a prerequisite pair, is it the first number that depends on the second number, or the second number that depends on the first number? And it's kind of sneaked in here, but I, I don't know, I had trouble reading it, to be honest. Um, but the idea here is that you have all these pairs and then of prerequisites, and then now later you have to do queries on them, right? to see whether th th there's a prerequisite. And the idea that I use is called the Floyd Warshaw al algorithm. And basically what it does, it, it also helps for shortest path, but in this case, I guess actually, it's not the Floyd Warshaw algorithm, it is just the Warshaw algorithm because this is the Boolean version of it, where, where um, basically if it goes uh, basically, it, it takes advantage of the transitive property, meaning that in this case, for example, in example three, well, it, it actually has that already. But basically, if A has a prerequisite of B, and B has a prerequisite of Z, uh, C, then A has a prerequisite of C. So the transitive property, generally. And from that, you could use the Warshaw's algorithm. Um, type it up. Then you could Google it. It's a... You could say a Boolean version of the Floyd Warshaw's algorithm that came in uh, a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, but I I did first, when I solved this problem, take a look at the ends. 
and the n is 100, so I knew that 100 cube would be fast enough. And even though there will be a lot of queries, all these queries are all of one lookup and adding it to the array, I suppose. So I did not have I did not worry about running time at all after seeing the n is equal to 100. And this is n cube for very obvious reasons, and n of square space also for obvious ish reasons. Um, but yeah, but this is Ford Warshaw, uh, th or this is Warshaw's algorithm uh, specifically, and it is pretty straightforward. Uh, well, it's a pretty straightforward application of it, um, but do, you know, I'll, I'll have a link somewhere so that you can kind of learn more about Warshaw's algorithm.